Knowledge is power. And this is powerful stuff. Wellness Education Cannabis Advocates of Nevada present the Week at 702 Nevada Cannabis News Hour with your host, Jen Solis. For the next 60 minutes, we'll take an in depth look at the cannabis reform revolution sweeping the nation. The phone lines are open at 731 1230. That's 731 1230 or toll free. Toll free. 1 866 820 5528. That's 1 866 820 KLAV. Now, let's bring on the host. Here is Jen Solis. Hello, everybody. Happy, happy Tuesday. Uh, to my right is Dukaj. We have Perry Haichu. And we also have William Beach Baker as a producer. And of course, Lawrence, he always makes me feel good i mean sound good um you guys we had a city council meeting that was really really kind of controversial in some what uh in some <laughs> sense but not really because it's almost business as usual um there were a lot of unhappy people today it was the valley of fire <laughs> i guess <laughs> there were a story. lot of un yeah <laughs> top story i think that a lot of people thought that they were going to get dispensary or um, dispensary permits that did not, and a lot of the, a lot of questions in the city today about that. Okay, you attended the meeting this morning. What percentage of applicants that were heard today were denied by the council? There were a good number of them denied today. Over, over half? About half. About, about half. half? Okay, that's disappointing. I mean, I, I think a lot of people might have been expecting that you know rubber stamp considering what they saw from the county and you know the process that they've seen in north town and things like that so you know maybe just maybe their expectations might have been a little well premature. you know that's that's the way the program was designed to work is that they were supposed to lay down the zoning and uh and the business the uh, practices and if the if it met that you're supposed to give them approval and then it comes down to the merit base in the state who actually gets the license what a lot of people and there's a ranking system. So are you that. saying that they were attempting to say that it was just going to be business as usual, just applying for a normal business license, and they were not going to hold any kind of special um, animosity, Favoritism? animosity, let's <laughs> yeah. say, toward the industry just because it's the industry? You well, know. there were there was a lot of that because you know, like Stavros Anthony has always been kind of in opposition to cannabis in general. I mean, he came out against dispensaries as they were as they were in their infancy and and he voted uh, you know against a lot of people that y it may have been a good idea and it was land use and zoning it was and also business licensing were re sending out notices saying that different things were wrong with people's applications that didn't seem to be wrong and i'm hearing this on a couple of different fronts not just you know just my own experience I'm anxious to see what the newspaper has to say tomorrow, what the Sun and the Nevada section tomorrow might have to their take on this, whether they're going to be uh, in agreement with the, let's see, the cannabis community and, and the uh, you know, efficacy of the, or the Well, it depends. Impartiality it depends. It's usually, hearings, it usually Fox is against and Channel 8 is kind of for. Uh, we'll, yeah. see. We'll, yeah. we'll see. Yeah, for sure. All right. Uh, what is else? What else in the local news is going on? Well, in local news, we have uh, obviously the Halloween parade coming up. That's some of the new local news. Of course, Friday evening, right? Seven o'clock. Yeah, seven Downtown o'clock. We can Street. we can be down on Fremont Street uh, participating in the Las Vegas Halloween parade. Uh, this is our fifth year in the parade. We've been in it since it since its inception. So, so you can wear your hottest cannabis costumes, or your scariest cannabis costumes, or your funniest kind of all the bling that we ask you not to bring to city council. You can bring it tonight. You know, <laughs> you can definitely bring it tonight. Um, well, yeah. Hmm? Oh. You want to know who got turned down? Uh, oh, Beach okay. wants, wants to go back to local news and know who got turned down for for the city applications there. Well, let's see. The MedMen, Kathy Gillespie's group, I know they got oh, turned man. down. Yeah, they I'm, were an excellent application. And, and on, on merit base, they, they well deserved the deserved it so and you know what i have no affiliation to them so that really freaking that says something they're very yeah. disappointing yeah they're very disappointing yeah for sure 
Um, who else got denied? Like M Life, I think that they got denied. They said because of. Um, I believe it was prior business practices, they said, or something like that. They were missing a few things on their application. Um, it's, it seemed like a lot of people were missing a few things on the application, but once again, that's not what this meeting was about. You're right. Well, <laughs> well then who did get permitted? You know, were there any repeat customers that you saw from the county that got approved or anything well no like there that? were no there were not a lot of repeat customers that, that got approved um but let's see who did get approved oh wait a minute it was the pioneer loan people down at 3500 i think the pioneer loan people may have been in that lois's district for a very very long time mm -hmm. well very possible yeah, but you know what? What kind of disturbed me about that is because the people that in, are in the loan and the 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 pawn shop people prey upon the weakest members of our communities already. I remember a long time ago, I heard from a a former casino executive that some of the Fremont Street hotels, one of their best days used to be the first of the month when people got their social security checks. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's just the way it does business. You know, you can't stop people from spending money the way they do. Yeah. And uh, I do understand what you're trying to say, though, is that these industries kind of, in some eyes, kind of prey upon the people who need help the most by offering these high interest loans and and things about that and things of that nature and now you're saying that maybe that we can pawn be... some weed <laughs> well i guess what we're trying to say is we're well, i wonder if i could morale. take out wait a second wait 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 can i and take out an installment <clears throat> on a bag of weed <laughs> we... like a weekly payment from these people well maybe at some point if they have their way uh <laughs> it just seems like so you're trying to say that maybe people in certain businesses shouldn't like maybe not let's say be disallowed to be in the industry but maybe that you're afraid of their their, their previous practices, practices, practices might I roll think, over yeah. into the following. Maybe they'll overcharge or maybe try to prey upon low-income people again. I don't know what you're what the, trying to go here. You know, where I'm trying to go here is that don't you think that it's somewhat wrong that the people that are getting business licenses that are getting approved are the people that are preying upon the people in Las Vegas mm -hmm. that are preying upon this community. And the people that didn't get approved were not approved because they, they hadn't been here for a long time maybe hadn't been in that district maybe hadn't contributed to somebody's well, campaign there really wasn't any rhyme or reason to it i mean they turned down the berkeley patients group i mean they seem to be a pretty good group they yeah, had sean loose yeah. on their on their board of directors and sean loose is like one of the uh board of directors i guess or owners of the berkeley patients group and they had a berkeley patients group day in berkeley proclaimed because mm -hmm. they had such good business practices yeah and that's what the state was looking for and then there was the greenleaf farms holdings which uh, you know was a complete destination they were they wanted to you know open up uh, public uh, broadcasting again no you're it, talking about that place that used to be the jose hogs up on west sahara near valley view yeah they yeah wanted or to... the older members of the community you might remember it as the old port tack building it's eighteen thousand square feet of building which and a and giant it, bar basically it right. was a giant bar, yeah, mm -hmm. but to make it a wellness destination, uh, you know, with, um, to make, you know, so that so the people can come in there and edit video and get credits for college and for in in high school mm -hmm. in some of the Votech stuff that we've got going, giving back to fifteen thousand dollars to schools in the area for school supplies annually. They're and, doing and, a and, health food and restaurant in there that was a ninety percent vegetarian menu. They were gonna they were gonna do education on like yoga and stretching and stuff like that. So it's not just a place to come get your medicine. It's a place <clears> to come learn how to be healthy and live a healthy lifestyle. Oh, definitely. I hear you out. There's a place in Oakland called Harborside that does something similar. They mm -hmm. offer a lot of free uh, f perks to their to their patients. All you got to do is go sign up for free and they have, you know, like uh, uh, aromatherapy or what's the acupuncture? The yeah. guys come in and masseuses and just all kinds of free perks for the patients. And uh, it's more of a destination than just a dispensary. You know, it takes half an hour to walk through the tour. And uh, I, I understand that there was some community opposition, let's say, well, or was, organiza organized opposition to this, uh, some there was mother a, hen groups. There was a Spanish Oaks uprising. They almost had, they mm. almost had pitchforks out there. There was like, how many people stood up and spoke for and against this one? Well, that, by far, uh, in 
the in the first day it seemed to have the the most people speaking in either way for or against out of any of them there were at least 26 people and some ceded their time to other people and stuff like that and it got really heated and there were a lot of people for it and we went out and canvassed and everything else oh, yeah. and now there's a group that wants support tomorrow um it's it's ramsey's group and and he is from von dank and he's been in the community since the beginning and um it's tomorrow at uh um, I, I'm not really sure what time. You know, you're going to need to check the website for this. It's um, either on the meetup. It's meetup.com forward slash WeCan702. Or it's um, Facebook, WeCan702. And we have a 120,000 followers. So, like, We're click on like. Hoping, yeah. Click a like. <laughs> Well, so how many more days of hearings are they having? How many? How much just, longer does this go? Just, on? just, just tomorrow, tomorrow. Just, just tomorrow. tomorrow. So you know what? If there's if there's a dispensary that's going up in your community and you do agree with it, please go out and and tell city council what you think and support your local, you know, support your local group. If they if they've reached out to you in the in the past, you need to go and speak for them if you're a patient. Well, no doubt, because this is just a continuation of the fights that we've had as patients for, for decades. You know, we went out of, I mean, I don't even know where to start. We fought at the state level, and then we fought at the city level, and now we're literally have to, you know, the county level, and now we're literally having to fight on a neighborhood level. I mean, what, are we going to have to fight house by house, you what know, it, at this point? Like, you know, Gandhi, is this a door-to-door -door battle? Wasn't like, it Gandhi that, isn't there a famous quote from Gandhi that basically says that, that, that first that they will, uh, first they'll ignore you? then that they'll uh, laugh at you, then they'll fight you, and then you win. Um, maybe that's all true, but it's just so frustrating at some time. Like, I was driving through the Scotch 80s on my motorcycle the other day, just cruising around, and I'm driving through and I see these signs that say, no pot shop in our neighborhood. Oh, yeah! yeah. Like, they no, had no pot shop in our neighborhood. And they're like really, really nice made. Like someone took the time to go out there and like, go have these printed up and like fear monger and like get to these people inside their head. They're like, oh, we can't have these dopers in our neighborhood. It's like, this is ridiculous. The governor signed this bill. This is medicine we're talking about. This is the and wrong time to come out for it, this fight. And yeah. it's just so disappointing to see this, this attitude persist among, I don't want to say the Fox News generation, but those exactly. 65 and older that are you just know, so stuck in their ways that will not budge no matter what the science says you know to hell with the evidence you know? exactly <laughs> exactly it was really greatly disappointing oh, that a doctor said that she got up and, and she fear-mongered her whole neighborhood and then it became a fight and then it became some kind of ego thing with her i think and that's just too bad that people can't let go of their egos and and their and they're prejudiced against people that are cannabis patients. I'm standing in line next to some of these people, and they're saying that people are losers. That's what Shay said. Well, and I'm, I'm, I'm like, look at them, and I'm like, do I look like a loser? Well, what's re oh, people are like, oh, you're a loser and you're lazy. It's like, well, our last three sitting presidents have all admitted to smoking cannabis. So when you sit here and you say, oh, well, you're not going to accomplish anything when you smoke cannabis, I kind of laugh at them. You know, Michael Phelps has won 19 gold medals. You say, you know, the fastest man in the world on land Usain Bolt and in the water Michael Phelps both admit to smoking cannabis often Dana White has said that uh, not publicly but he said that if they tested every single fighter for marijuana all the time like 60 to 70 percent of his fighters would be out of a job like there are a lot of and very reputable people who are professionals who do this recreationally not just medicinally and it's f hilarious to me to think that this this attitude still persists that you're not going to accomplish anything in this world. Well, we've got Montel Williams backing a Florida medical marijuana amendment that, that he said that he is in support of amendment two in the ballot initiative to put voters in November 4th mm -hmm. election. So Montel is backing something in Florida. Um, you no know, doubt. he backed the Washington, D.C. thing, I believe he was I don't want to say solely responsible, but he was had a major influence in getting the Washington DC uh, decriminalization issue dealt with because I think he was kind of a victim of their well, like, police speaking uh, of, incident. Speaking of victims, <laughs> well, let's, let's talk about getting stabbed on, on the way out from Eric Holder. Oh, oh yeah. You know, Eric I, Holder says he's cautiously optimistic as it comes to Colorado and Washington's implementation of regulated and legal adult <laughs> and control systems. He said, we don't want to put the federal system and low-level people are in there for possession offenses into jail. 
Well, I'm, the title of this story, I'll call it Don't uh, Piss on Me and Tell Me It's Raining, you know, because it <laughs> seems as though that's what he's been doing for a long time. He says, oh, well, if you just hang on with me just a little bit longer, we're going to fix it. And if you just hold on, you know, we're talking about it and we're we're trying to deal with it. But, you know, show me, you know, uh, actions speak louder than words. And well, while he's talking about it, there are shops being raided in California. There are shops being raided in Denver today. There was a thing that blasted on my uh, MPP little blast on my Facebook that said, oh, you know, there are cops, uh, uh, Denver cops in conjunction with DEA raiding Denver shops today. They didn't say who or why, but they just said it's an ongoing investigation and people are freaked out. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, you it's know, a real how, thing. how many more laws do we have to attempt to follow before we're going to feel safe conducting business in this new industry? So... It's 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 it it really it really does it's the fear mongering type of situation that that is just really it, it got me really out about this and you know what I I stopped following Obama I'm just like I'm sick because Obama was basically said when he went in that that he was not going to arrest patients and but you got to remember some you mean of these, six years ago yeah. <laughs> You know, and well, yeah, that's why do you think that I'm so mad at the Democratic Party? Because, you know, it's like they're still in in cahoots with this. And it's just like he's he's termed out. So it's like, get out, get well, out. Well, yeah. Well, who, who, who are we going to get to replace him, though? You know, right now I was watching the news the other day and they were talking Clinton Bush on the ticket there, you know. Well, I've been doing my homework on all the potential candidates wait, 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 on wait. both sides. Yeah, they're which talking. Which Clinton? Which book? Speaking of, isn't Clinton in town? Oh, that's where Raymond is. Yeah, Bill's in, right. Bill's in town. Oh, Bill's in yeah, town. Yeah, Jeb Bush, Jeb Bush versus Hillary Clinton. It looks like that might be our primary can, Democratic can, Republican choices. On I don't know. That seems like an ugly baby to me. Well, I, I just don't, I wanted to kind of thumb my nose at the people who voted for Obama and say oh, yeah, I'm going to support Bush just because you know, like you, we're coming back for you. But realistically. I can't do that just because he's so anti-cannabis, like vocally. He's telling Floridians not to vote for Amendment 2 and things like that. And, you know, once again, considering the family dynamic, I'm disappointed that he would be so uh, publicly against that. All right. With that, we're going to oh. take a break and we're going to come right. back to our 420 moment because, you know, as stoners, we can talk and talk and talk. No doubt. <laughs> you need help getting your Nevada medical marijuana card? Dr. Reefer is now accepting new patients. There are no medical records required. We have a doctor on staff to give you a thorough physical examination. There is a 99% approval rate for patients. They also have a money back guarantee. If you don't qualify, you don't pay. Free consultation is available. Call 702-428-0000. 702-428-0000. To get your Nevada medical marijuana card today. Green Spot Hydroponics is a Las Vegas based distributor of specialty indoor and outdoor gardening supplies. Locally owned and operated with over 3,000 square feet of inventory. Expert and friendly staff to help you with all your growing and hydroponic needs. Our pricing and service will not be beat. We help you grow. 3355 Westlake Mead Boulevard, just behind the Texas station. Mention we can and receive 10% off. Call us at 702 463 6000. That's 702-463-6000. You're listening to the Nevada Cannabis News Hour, produced by We Can, the wellness education cannabis advocates of Nevada. We Can is a 501c3 nonprofit. If you're interested in sponsoring us, donating, or advertising on this radio show, please contact our advertising department at 702-218-5226 or Kurt, K-U-R-T, at WeCan702. <laughs> Welcome back. That sound indicates it's time for our 420 moment. Today we're going to honor celebrity honoree Jack Black. All right. Right on. You know, Jack, you know. School of Rock. School of Rock, yeah. In, in many of his movies he plays, play, portrays a stoner, and in real life he is. Uh, well, he's there's surprise, the surprise. Surprise. <laughs> freaking first clue yeah, on that okay, one. Breaking news. <laughs> yeah, he says that marijuana advocacy is no laughing matter, not even to comedic actor, musician Jack Black. The Tropic of Thunder star is, uh, is serious and very public about his support of the cause, along with his bud buddies, Bill Maher and Adam Carolla. He is also on the advisory board of the Marijuana Policy Project, MPP. That's very cool. I was unaware that he was a... Uh, 
MPP board member. That's kind of funny. Yeah, exactly. No. So, yeah, that goes out to Jack Black. Uh, yeah, we'll big see us. All yep. right, Jack Black, we honor you. Yep. All right, you know what? Well, back to the news we were talking about. Eric Holder is saying cautiously optimistic, and Perry talking about. Oh, tell me it's raining. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was going to say about, yeah, golden showers. Um, the eight priority areas that are, that the Justice Department needs to focus on to prevent marijuana distribution of minors, interstate uh, drug trafficking, yeah, we're violence like, associated with the illegal trade. They, uh, they want to make sure that the money's not going to cartels or bad guys. They want to make sure that you're not using violence or firearms in the cultivation and distribution of marijuana. They don't want you to possess marijuana on federal property, period. Now, that's all federal property. They don't want you interstate drug trafficking. No, interstate they don't drug want you to grow it on public lands. They don't want you to contribute to drug driving or what they call the exacerbation or other adverse public health consequences associated with marijuana use. That's a very vague, that's very vague terminology, <laughs> but what I get from that is they're like, you know. Or anything else we can find. Yeah, well, they don't want you smoking on premises is what I get from that. Yeah. You know, or things like that. But, well, uh, so Eric Holder is cautiously, cautiously opt optimistic, but then you're talking about, um, you know, in California, there are some raids going on for some places that you've been, Perry. Very yes, disappointingly I so. I got this dropped in my lap, and it says that the pharmacy in Los Angeles got raided. For those of you who have ever been to Los Angeles and are active in the medical marijuana community out there, you'll know that the pharmacy is a, one of the original shops in L.A. I believe it's one of the first hundred and yeah. very, very popular shop i've been there numerous times very 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 strict they follow all of the laws and procedures correctly you drive by this place unless you know that it's a that it's a, a dispensary you wouldn't know i mean the the closest thing i mean it's it's a, it's an all organic uh herbs and you know they said they say rare herbs is the the closest thing to it's discreet yeah, it's pretty very discreet, discreet you know it's not like they don't have people with you know signs out and you know waving yeah, them around not on the like corners and things like that no <laughs> well, that, that's so funny Either you would that say or, that. Or that place we went to in hollywood remember that time <laughs> Yeah, well, that's funny you would say that because their Venice Beach location was not raided. I don't understand, you know, you would think that the more high profile of the, I I'm not going to get into that, yeah. but, you know. Yeah, anyway, like the anyway. ones that are obviously slinging. <laughs> right. Oh, they moved. Okay. Yeah, they moved. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And so there was another, uh, wasn't there another raid in, in, Cal in California? Oh, well, they raided a couple of places in West Hollywood, too, but the names of the dispensaries weren't, uh, weren't disclosed at that time. They, oh, not they, familiar? No, <laughs> they, they interviewed a couple of uh, the employees, and they're like, you know, what happened here? And they're like, oh, well, we were following all the rules and all the state laws, and we don't know what's going on. And so this reporter tried to go up to the police officers, and they're like, well, what's going on? And they're like, look, this is an open investigation. We can't tell you anything more than what we've already told you. So, you know, when we are allowed to, we'll disclose everything. And, you know, sorry, kick rocks. Well, you know what? If if any of this stuff ticks you off, we've got voting, early voting. So you need to, to get out and vote early and vote often. That's we right. We do okay. have a pro-cannabis voter's guide um, out on Weekend 702 uh, in the, on the Facebook and um, meet up Weekend 702 forward slash and so now, of course, these aren't direct endorsements from Weekend. What we're trying to do is guide our the medical marijuana community to where what we feel is doing our homework on these people's you know pasts. I, I mean, what else can we say? We well, can't. it was you know what what is concerning me is some of these ju ju uh, judicial elections because some of these family court judges are up for re-election and and there are some people that you should that have followed the rules you know and and but are compassionate to patients and mm -hmm. you really should know these and so they're not you know an official d endorsement but we have found them to be pro cannabis no doubt family courts are a huge issue you know i had custody mm -hmm. issues growing up and it, it, it's very very important that we protect our kids and have fair and equal hearings for these parents who are taking their medicine uh, yeah i am not asking i'm not asking no. anybody to vote for anybody but i'm i'm just saying that you know if they follow the laws and the rules then that's good well sure. what we're trying to do in providing these lists is we're not endorsing these candidates we're just letting you know that these are the candidates that have 
proven themselves to be cannabis friendly. Well put. Um, there's there's Republicans, there's Democrats on there, there's Libertarians, you know, there's there's every party on there. Well, and the, these judicial races are nonpartisan. Mm-hmm. So they're yeah, nonpartisan. Of course. Yeah, races, the judicial so. and the sheriff race are nonpartisan. Yeah. Speaking of the sheriff race, is that just about the ugliest pig you've ever seen? Oh man, don't get me started on all that. You know. Our well, go- that's what I want to talk about because neither of these guys are really pro cannabis, and they've proven so in the past, and they've proven themselves just to just to run down the party line or whatever else. It's like the lesser of two evils. You you never know which, you know which one. No, jo- I agree. Joe Lombardo. Uh, you know, it's like, or, you know, who is that guy? Well, Larry, Larry Burns. Burns. And it's starting to get nasty, I was nasty say Larry too. Bird. Yeah, it's starting to get kind of nasty. Well, like, you see the, hate, the, the hateful is- uh, commercials starting to come out on both sides. Like, oh, Larry Burns is taking union bribes, and Joe Lombardo is the hand-picked, and this and that. And it's like, God, when does it end? Well, you know? I was going to say, uh, you know, Larry, uh, Larry Burns is the candidate that said in the beginning that the reason that he became a cop is because there was no war going on and he was a SWAT command leader over in the ghetto um and he, you know so yeah the FBI guy versus the union <laughs> yeah so <coughs> interesting yeah anyway why, yeah why can't we get a sheriff like uh like the they have up in Washington cuz uh here's a story that just came out Legalization, in regional news. Yeah, in regional news. Legalization works. Washington Sheriff tells Oregonians. Sheriff John Ucart of King County, Washington, has something to say to Oregon voters. Marijuana legalization works. All right. The Yes on 91 campaign for legal marijuana in Oregon began airing ads this week featuring Ucart. In the 32nd spot, he talks about his continued support for regulated, taxed, and legalized marijuana in Washington. He says that the strict regulations are producing the benefits Washington residents hoped for and encourage Oregonians to take the legalization leap as well. Now, the full measure on which Oregonians are already voting on in, the, in a mail-in election is running the 36 pages. It's the most regulated of the three marijuana pro- proposals that initially tried to collect signatures this election cycle. And it's much tougher than the measure that failed here two years ago, which he calls a wacky pot law. Uh, the most recent statewide poll suggests the pitch is working. 52% of voters said they support the measure and 40% said they do not. The final result will depend heavily on voter turnout, of course. It's a midterm election, so yeah, we'll see how it goes. Exactly, and there, there are a lot of moms that are against the argument, yeah. and they say that no regulation that marijuana is sold everywhere. They said support is particularly high among groups typically least likely to vote, especially in a midterm election, which is, of course, what we've been struggling with. Exactly. <sighs> exactly. Yeah. Well, you, uh, Ucart, the the sheriff from uh, from Washington, he, he, yeah, his uh, includes Seattle and over 1.9 million re- residents. Wow. He says that uh, he points out that goals he has seen fulfilled under Washington's Initiative 502 framework. He says tax dollars are going to schools and the police, not the drug cartels. Wasteful arrests are way down. Huge thing. We're saving a lot of tax money, arresting people for nothing. Well, I don't know. I think the big uh, the police are the biggest cartel of all. Well, and was- well, the problem is that Washington's tax scheme is making pot so expensive that it's hard to compete with the black market. Some of these shops, you know, Oregon is charging only one tax, a thirty five per ounce sales tax on the final purchase, an amount that's designed to make marijuana cheap enough to undermine the black market, but expensive enough to generate the necessary revenue for drug treatment, law enforcement, and school funding that was promised by the proponents of the initiative. So they're hoping that they can strike that balance. But uh, like I said, you know, this is all an experiment. So we're trying to roll back these decades of mis- mis- uh, misinformation. So, you know, hopefully we can deliver what we promise. Well, over in Seattle, in Seattle, Washington, Seattle sends warning letters to pot shops. Uh, the city of Seattle is warning that more than 300 medical marijuana businesses that their days could be numbered. Uh, the officials have set, set letters to these marijuana growers, possessors, and dispensaries, and they need them to shut down. So there is the backlash that we're seeing in this country. Um, and, you know, we can follow along at, you know, with that as Nevadans, because it seems like in each of these states, there is kind of like this surgence, then this backlash from the government, and then this resurgence and backlash, and, and it's it's like a constant war and balance. And you know what? I think that it's just a shame that we can't see each other as human beings and see that we're fighting over a plant. It is very much in flux still, and this, you know, this fight is not going to go down easy. 
you know, it's not going to be we're just going to walk in the door and get this done. I mean, I knew that when this uh, recreational framework was taking place in these two states that it was not just going to be like, oh, ho-hum and, and uh, kumbaya. Well, well, you know, <laughs> I've said since the beginning that I'm really against recreational coming up too soon in Nevada. Um, and, and I know that, you know, you'd like recreational here. And, and I would I definitely think it, like it. I know there's a lot of... I don't believe in recreational. I believe every use is I, medical. I know you don't, Kurt. <laughs> every I enjoy use is the, medical. I, I was going to say, I actually like the way you, you look at that, but that's a very... You know, proactive way to look at it, and uh, people are self-medicating. But uh, there's a lot of voices in the medical marijuana community who don't want recreational legalization. They think that it's going to strip patients of their rights, and it's going to, you know, be the downfall of us all, and things like that. And uh, you know, I understand people's concerns. I mean, they want to retain their right to grow, which we're going to be addressing in the next legislative council. I think even you, Jen, at the, your legislative council, uh, your interim legislative council appointment, were able to negotiate some kind of deal to where even law enforcement was willing to push back the sunset clause for a period of years in order to see how the record medical uh, framework plays out. Is that correct? Well, that is correct. And I think it's also, I think there's also a ploy. There is a, um, now there is a, a, a Nevada, what is it, dispensary association mm -hmm. that's being set up and they're setting up so that they can kind of close the loop on, on the dispensary so that they'll have kind of a, uh, almost a, call it, or a cartel behind Oh, absolutely. This. I remember the first day I met you, I was telling you that at the end of this, there exactly. was going to be two groups of people after this all settled. There was going to be a group of people that had the licenses that were going to try to lock everybody out. And then there was going to be group B who didn't get licensed. They're going to try to break in. And of course, you know, you want to be first to market, as they say in the pharmaceutical world. So we're going to see that that push and pull and well and, <laughs> and and see and that that happened and then they also set it up by saying okay well you know what we're going to allow the patients to extend their time also to ha because we don't know what's going to happen with these dispensaries and 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 everything and, you know and i think that's a wise decision but if they think they're going to come around in a couple of years and try to shut it down on patients that's where i'm going to say no 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 well, look, it hasn't happened in any of the other states that allow no, for personal growth. So it's not one of those things that I'm truly, truly, truly worried about because no, it, I don't you think know, so. And I'm sorry to, to jump around so much. I'm sorry <laughs> to jump around so much. We were on regional news, and there's a little bit of news out of Alaska. Uh, Alaska's Measure Two, which is spending so much money, is twelve times the amount of the opposition, is still neck and neck, but just got a big. Uh, boost they got some support from law enforcement Kurt, oh right on yeah, Kurt and former alaska law enforcement officers are offering their support for passage of a ballot measure that would legalize recreational marijuana use in the 49th state in television and radio ads backing the passage of alaska's amendment to active and retired police officers touting the benefits for the state that uh, excuse me touting the benefits to the state that approval would bring they vote on this measure on november 4th and in one of the ads bill parker who used to work for the alaska department of corrections said that enforcing current marijuana laws is a poor use of valuable resources, both human and financial. He says, quote, the war on marijuana is wasteful and it hasn't worked. And he says that the current practices and policies are like using a hammer to go after a mosquito. Of course, support for the measure is not universal among police officers in Alaska. We currently have the highest arrest rates for substance abuse of any Alaska community. Are they talking John, about substance abuse in general or are they talking about just cannabis? That's, you see, that's this my is, question. Yeah, this is the known police chief and... Uh, you know, said, and what what really is abuse? You used to live up there, Perry. What's what's the substance of uh, of choice usually for Alaskans? Is it pot or is it alcohol, or is it pills? Uh, wow. Well. Or, or what what? <laughs> Well, I mean, you were a little kid. But I was you, just going to say, you, in the winter time, I mean, it's a heavy drinking state. Don't get me wrong, but uh, I would definitely say that. Well, I mean, it's no joke. Marijuana is the number one cash crop in Alaska. No doubt about it. It's just not being taxed. Uh, even Sarah Palin, who's a very conservative, well-known Republican, when she was the governor up there, I don't want to say she turned a blind eye to it, but she wasn't exactly putting the hammer down on the growers either. Well, I saw I saw in a recent statement by Sarah Palin that she that she doesn't care about cannabis. She does not. She has. She's that that she's fine with it in her state, that she thinks well, it Alaskans should be regulated. Alaskans have serious problems to deal but, with. You know, it's like, hard just to survive up there. Well, she you thinks know? it should be regulated, so therefore, i.e. taxed. People you know? are very libertarian up there, considering it's a very, you know, red, quote, Republican state. There aren't too many Democratic legislators, but they're very libertarian. People want to be left alone. They want to be told what to do. And, uh, 
that cannabis lifestyle just lops in with that. These pe a lot of these people who live in the rural areas have been pushed to the fringes of society already. They live out in these sticks for a reason. They don't want property. You know, they don't have property taxes. Yeah, it truly is the last frontier beach for sure. Like you, like you just put a note in front of me that says that it's you know Alaska is the last frontier, and they really embrace that. They they hold true to it, and Alaskans are very protective of their. Uh, of their little world up there, you know, and they don't like what but they call us, us it, lower 48ers coming up there and telling them what to do. If you think about it, Las Vegas is kind of that way too. We, we are. are, man. We are, we are on the fringe and we're on the edge all the time with gambling and prostitution. Gambling and prostitution are like freaking... What, milk and honey here? Well, no doubt. 24 hour alcohol. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We, we have very taboo ways of generating our revenue here in Nevada, but we've always thumbed our nose at the at the naysayers and the disbelievers here, and we've done well for ourselves, and Alaskans are, are similar in that nature. So, you know, I'm hoping that they're going to take control of their own destiny with this. The people will take control of their own destiny, let's say. So and, speaking uh, of getting control of your own destiny and libertarian, the Libertarian uh, Party of Nevada has put out a voter's guide, and if you'd like to get their information, they're on Meetup. Uh, dot com and look for libertarian you know meetups a great way of finding anything that you're interested in and and, um, and expanding on that idea so if some of these ideas of freedom and liberty uh, you know they call to you or hiking or anything else <laughs> meetups a great way to do That's it right. Right. Um, looks like we may have a caller Tom hi Tom how you doing welcome to the show good hey a little off topic but I have a question about cloning. Okay. If I have a mother plant and cut clone, uh, cut a clone off that, and then a clone off that, and a clone off that clone, and go down, I don't know, 12, 14 times, is that okay? Sure. Well, there there are various there are a variety of of thinking on this, but actually, if some people think that that's fine and that's very okay. Yes, yeah, some people think that the genetics actually get stronger over time. Some people swear that they get weaker. It depends on, you know, the strength of the plants that you're cutting those clones from that mother from. I know that sounds silly because they're all supposed to be the same, but you I, know, I would have to say it's okay as long as it's still producing good for you and you're getting good trichomes on there and you're happy you with the product. I mean. Absolutely, it's fine as long as long as it still seems to be meeting standards. Just as long as there's no genetic modification, we're okay. <laughs> Just uh, try it out and see if it's still good. Huh? Well, no, I I found that that it is good that I, that I've had no problems with with clones of clones. But some people want to have like a mother plant, and this is what they want. But we have such a variety in our room that you know. You know, we clone trade with people. I find that that that's pretty easy. Well, to... if you found something you really love and you enjoy growing and medicating with, then I would encourage you to keep using it because I've had strains that I have experimented with. And, oh, I really like this, but, you know, maybe I'll try something else. And then, damn, you know, I really wish I would have gotten that one back. And, you know, gee whiz, and I lost that strain. So, so yeah. there are some <laughs> – and, if, and if, you're, if you're cloning and you're making your own genetics, people have their mother plants so that they know of that, that uh, typical phenome and that, that it's the same. Um, and there are some people that say that they pr they produce less as the as the time goes on, but I don't think that I've seen any science on either one of those. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I appreciate it. Hey, no, no worries. Problem. Glad to be of service, and thank you so much for calling in. Thanks for calling in. Okay. Thank you. Bye. 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 So I got a story out of Colorado that we kind of touched on a little bit last week with the rookie cookies. Remember that story? The rookies. The rookie cookies. Oh, yeah, that yeah. make me sound like a Wookiee. Yeah, well, the Colorado health officials are now calling for what is nearly a full ban on retail med med marijuana edibles in the state uh, just 10 months after sales begun. Uh, what they're, what Did they're... you see those billboards in the news? That they have the billboards that say that you're, this candy looks just like Halloween candy. Yeah, that's, that's the latest in the pop propaganda and scaring. Well, they're telling <laughs> – they're addressing a problem that hasn't become a problem yet. Well, it, 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 in ways it has. What, what they're what trying to do, is? what they're trying to do now is they're trying to restrict the sizing of the edibles down to ten milligram servings, and that's it. Um, hmm. Which isn't really great for most patients out there because most patients who use edibles are usually usually using up around the hundred milligram level. But I kind of do agree in one way. 
that you should have lower doses like that for people coming in. But they should be it clearly figures. marked. Yeah, but, we were talking about this last week yes. because. But as a patient, I shouldn't have to. Bu- I shouldn't have to buy ten to get the effect that I need. Well, that's I like the have new that beer theory. You know, you can cut beer down to three point two percent, and if you really want to, a drunk's just going to get twice. You know, drink twice as many beers to get it done. That's the old theory. And you know. yeah, but say say you were using alcohol for medicine, and you know, a beer you needed you needed a twelve pack of beer or something stronger like that. Well, you know, they they have that in, yeah, in, in alcohol. That's why this is medicinal. This is supposed, you know, the doctor's recommendation is supposed to override Okay, that. so let's let's expand on that thought. So what about taking more than one Lord tab or whatever else because it doesn't do it for the dose well, anymore? Well, then they have higher dosages for that. Just like, let's just yeah. go for something a little easier like ibuprofen. You have over-the-counter 200 milligram ibuprofens. Yes, but, but you can take up to three or yeah, four of them. Or you can go to the doctor and get the bad boys, the 800 milligram ones, which is the same thing but once again the doctor just wants to know if you're getting that high of a dosage what's going on this is why we get medical marijuana cards so yeah. that the train well, well but i don't think that the state should st- just step in and say you can only sell 10 milligram servings because as i say that would be like the state saying you can only sell ibuprofen in t- in 10 milligrams but so, I wanna, you so know, if i need to stop my pain and i'm used to this i need to go buy so much more it's i want to bring this back home to say that uh, when i stop using cannabis nothing happens to me except that i'm not using cannabis if i was drinking that high of dosage and i stopped using it i could have tremors anxiety vomiting um what else can you have from oh, delusions and stuff like that hallucinations yeah, alcohol okay. withdrawal is nasty yeah i went okay. Okay. Well, what about oxycodone thing. if I'm withdrawing well, from those? You see, course, I don't know because I'm allergic to all that no, crap. No, I understand so that, we but need to, like, we let's need look to... at the flip side of that, though. There are There's edibles that I've seen that have over a 1,000 milligrams of THC in one brownie. Yeah, That's it's... a lot of THC. I mean, you take one bite off of that, and you're, like, lit. <laughs> I've seen, you know what? I've seen also patients that were first-time patients that want to dab, and I tell them, don't do that. Yeah, that's a really bad idea, you know. That is a really <laughs> bad idea. And that, I, I told somebody that. I was like, don't, I wouldn't do that. Start and out he vaporizing. Said, and he said, why? He said, because I took I p- took some puffs off, off a joint. And I said, well, because a dab is like very a super joint. concentrated. <laughs> yeah, you think you're a tough guy. You're One gonna, hit. You know, and, you're going to ruin and, it for yourself. And you know what happened? Hmm. He vomited and then went to sleep. And, and that is what happens, you know, if you kind of are... Uh, overdose on marijuana it's not an overdose as much as that you've had too much and you'll throw up um well we're we're about to go on a break and i'd like to talk about fungi when i get back all right the von dank group offers turnkey solutions for all your cannabis needs bringing transparency and responsibility to a young budding industry Helping patients by producing the cleanest, safest, and most potent medicines and infusibles possible. The Von Dank Group is a design, management, and consulting corporation with over 30 years of industry experience and knowledge of the dispensary, edibles, infusible kitchen, and large-scale cultivation of cannabis manufacturing facilities. Let the Von Dank Group help you grow your cannabis business from seed to green. www.vondank.com Finally, Nevada medical marijuana dispensaries are opening, but you must have your medical marijuana card to get inside. Call the friendly team at Karma Holistic Health Foundation, toll free, 855-420-1110, or visit GetMedicalMarijuanaNow.com. Karma Holistic Health Foundation will give you legal access to medical marijuana. All veterans receive a discount, 855-420-1110, or visit GetMedicalMarijuanaNow.com. You're listening to the Nevada Cannabis News Hour, produced by We Can, the wellness education cannabis advocates of Nevada. We Can is a 501c3 nonprofit. If you're interested in sponsoring us, donating, or advertising on this radio show, please contact our advertising department at 702 218 5226 or Kurt, K U R T, at WeCan702.org. All right, welcome back, everybody. We're talking about cannabis news, all that there is to print, and and I want to talk about fungi. We were talking about overdoses and uh, and in mushrooms, and those are psychedelic type. Uh, <laughs> you can't overdose on those either. You will vomit before you overdose, and um, I don't know if there's any withdrawals from mushrooms. 
I would that's, that's just like the, the oxycodone thing. I don't take pills either, but you know, I'd like to everybody become informed. There's also one more treatment that I'd like to talk about that's hallucinatory in nature is that when people are getting off of oxycodone, uh, some people are doing an ayahuasca and um, then uh, treatment. And what ayahuasca is, is a uh, hallucination type of of drug you take it once and you're supposed to go through it with withdrawals and and it gets you clean have you heard anything about this i have a friend who's an expert in it if you really want to expand upon this i could have him call in next week and we could go into it a little bit but my knowledge of it personally is very very limited but from what i understand a lot of westerners travel to south america to experience ayahuasca and like you said whether it is just for personal enrichment or whether it's just for uh, well, whether it's just like for cleaning themselves out for a spiritual thing, or whether it's a drug addiction thing, you know, there well, seems to be a lot of mental uh, a mental power that is released upon the taking of this you, mysterious you have to, drug. You have to have a guide, uh, uh, was a shaman. That, That's what that they, they say. Yeah, that, that leads you through the experience. So, but it's and, no joke. You know, this is some seriously powerful medicine here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, and then, then, and then, in addition to the ayahuasca, you're supposed to there. There is an ibogaine also that is a pharmaceutical, and it is, and it's supposedly the like the male version of that. And the reason I would I I looked into this is that somebody was telling me about this, and I was like, you know, that's interesting. And then in one of my laboratory magazines, they started talking about ibogaine as being a a, a, a hallucinatory substance that helps people get off of opiate addictions and I thought well wait I've already heard about ayahuasca and then the laboratory magazine said that this was a secondary treatment for that and I'm it's my lab magazines and research magazines are now coming out with so much cannabis stuff um, hallucination and hallucinatory substance stuff and, and, and a lot of science that's coming out. And, and I'm really excited because it, it means that maybe cannabis is going to get a fair shake in America. What I wonder is, uh, does the pharmaceutical version of ayahuasca come up? Do they prescribe a shaman to administer it for you? No, that's a doctor. <laughs> but, you know, I... I don't know, man. I, 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 I kind of have mixed thoughts about that whole, you know, pharmaceutical ayahuasca thing. But, you know, if it helps people... If it helps people, it helps people. I'm good with it. So, well, let's move on to yeah. Texas. Deep yeah. in the heart of Texas. <laughs> All right. You know what? That good old bill up on Capitol Hill, you know, the in conjunction junction, mm -hmm. the schoolhouse rockers theme. Well, guess what? <laughs> Texas did. Texas made it into a pro cannabis thing, and they're going full Monty on it, covering not only decriminalization, but medical and recreational as well. All facets of legalization. Congratulations, Texas. You are doing it bigger. <laughs> as usual. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, there's some bills right now that uh, that could change token in Texas for good. Right now, they have uh, their the C civil penalty bill, which is citing Texans' overwhelming support of reduced marijuana penalties, as well as the success that other states have had with decriminalization. The Marijuana Policy Project has drafted a bill to change the civil penalties for marijuana possession in Texas. This bill offers the least amount of alteration in the medical marijuana laws already in place and would not legalize marijuana. It would, however, somewhat decriminalize small amounts of weed and lower the penalties you could face for simple possession charges. Hmm. So, They have also introduced a medical marijuana bill that nearly half of the states in the U.S. have worldwide laws that protect medical marijuana patients from criminal penalties. And over half the voters in Texas, 58%, support the passage of medical marijuana laws in their state. Yeehaw! We got some details on that bill. Under the bill, medical patients with proper authorization from a doctor would not be arrested or penalized for possessing up to two and a half ounces, just like Nevada, of marijuana, nor would they be penalized for growing cannabis in a secure location. Patients would, of course, be diagnosed with one of the specific debilitating medical conditions listed under the guidelines to qualify. Physicians would not be allowed to be punished for suggesting that a medical patient use cannabis for the alleviation of their symptoms, which is, of course, of concern for doctors in Texas. Uh, let's see. Under so, specific guidelines, medical marijuana businesses, more commonly referred to as dispensaries, would be allowed to cultivate, cultivate and sell medical pot to patients, which would remove the criminal elements of obtaining marijuana by medical patients, eliminating that whole 10-year 
mess that we had here in Nevada. From sea to shining <laughs> sea. It seems like we're moving across America. Well, in like it's it's like a blaze. It's like the biggest markets Woo-hoo! too. You know, MPP's targeting these real big markets. Like yep. you know, me uh, Beach was talking to me uh, uh, over the break, and he's like, "Look, you know, we're going after Florida and Texas and California now, and then New York, and then after that, it's Ohio, and that's really the big five the big five population centers of the country where most of the electoral votes are held. And I know that doesn't mean a lot, but you know, when you get into presidential elections and these recreational issues become bigger and bigger, it might become, you know, a larger voting issue than people want to admit right now, potentially with the emergence of the millennials as a, larger voting block and exactly i i have been waiting for some people to die for years (laughs) (laughs) i hope we're not in trouble saying something like that careful well you know i you know i'm not gonna go take them out (laughs) but the thing is is that they just have there is a set way of voting and it's just such freaking mccarthyism and their jackboot it's like oh oh my god just please but also just a plan it's just a plan but you know the industry evolves every day like you said we're attacking these states that no one thought we had a chance in just a few years ago and now we have the ev- the eventual evolution of some of these advocacy organizations into real legit lobbying groups like example here the marijuana policy project pack makes the maximum financial contribution to jeff johnson for governor in minnesota the marijuana policy project contributed four thousand dollars to the campaign of republican gubernatorial candidate jeff johnson the maximum allowed under state law now why this is strange is because most most of these cannabis advocacy or lobbying firms, you know, donate to the person of their choice, not both sides. And that's kind of an eventual evolution, I would think, is for as these uh, companies get larger in stature and have the resources to do both, they should try to influence both sides of the aisle instead of so stubbornly standing on one side. And I mean, of that's course, a good point. Can't we all just get along? Of course. And beyond that, they have legitimate reason for donating to him. They feel like uh, their Democratic candidate has kind of waffled on some of the issues that he had promised to them. And this Republican guy is promising to the, to, the, to deliver. So they're trying so to go to bat for him. with a more libertarian bent. It's to, a little bit of both. Yeah. You know, you know, and, and I had I had a, a guy that used to tell me that he was uh, he was very fiscally Republican and socially That's right. liberal. I consider myself very much that way. And Beach is not you know nodding in agreement. You know, Republicans aren't bad if we smoke cannabis. I was kind of laughed out the door by some of my friends in the party for that, but it's okay because they'll come around. You know, I've long said that there's no colors for me except green. No doubt. Absolutely. So, you know, and, and that's just the theme of this Halloween Day Parade. It's Together We Can. Um, there are some great organizations that are going to come in and march with us along the parade route. Fantastic. Um, you can get the parade route and all the information on our Facebook and on our meetup. Um, so or just Google in. search Las Vegas Halloween Parade and you know they'll have the route there. It's and, a wonderful event. They've been having it for years. It's blowing up. It's very, you know, they had an article in the LA Weekly about how one of it's one of the things you got to do in vegas on halloween so if you if you want to march with us as a proud cannabis user or a supporter dressed up in your best cannabis bling and come on out at the beginning of the parade we're going to be on a um magic carpet and isn't that awesome and then we have also appropriate yeah exactly magic carpet and it's going to be patience and paradise is the theme and we're going to have a little paradise uh float in, on the back a little island theme so it looks like the magic carpet is taking off the float well, um I guess they're going to have a dj and um after the dj we if you are marching in the parade uh, just wear your best cannabis bling and come march with us. And if you can sit down on the float if you want to rest. It's going to be a blast and the weather is going to be beautiful. It's going to be an epic like Halloween and it's on Friday night. Bring the it's, kids. Yeah, it's going to be a wonderful time. We're going to hand out lays to that. Um, we also have a, another local group here in town that they're holding a, um, a dinner at Lowry's. And, um, that's on Thursday. Check, check the information on our meetup. No yep. doubt. Okay. All right. And I guess that's it for this week. I don't know. We've got more time, Is that don't it? we? Ten oh. seconds. Okay, ten we seconds. have ten seconds. See, I can talk a long time. <laughs> no anyway, well, so thank you again, and we'll see you next week, I guess. And thank you for tuning in. Adios. Uh, all right, be safe out there.